Hey guys, welcome to PointCarding.com and today we're taking a viewer suggestion and we're going to talk about how to properly install your throttle cable and throttle slide valve in the Briggs 206. So once you have your throttle cable sheeting installed, which we'll leave up to the individual viewer, the next step is going to be to actually thread in your throttle cable itself. For the Briggs & Stratton uh, engine, it's really important that you get the 0 .120 inch throttle cable uh, with a very small ball end on, uh, that's cylindrical on the end of it. That's going to allow it to fit into the throttle cable uh, or the throttle cable sheathing as well as the throttle valve for the Briggs 206. Find the end of your throttle cable sheathing. Sometimes you will have to trim the end of this if um, from the factory they cut it a little bit uh, wonky. Thread your throttle cable in and push it through. And um, at times, um, this can be a little bit of a process to start. Sometimes you want to get a small, um, you know, you can round the end of the throttle cable if it's giving you issues. Or you can cut some of the excess off of it, um, like this one, if it comes undone, so that you have a nice, clean end. And again, simply thread it in there and push it through. At the end, if you run into any interference, it's likely that uh, your throttle cable line holder here, closer to the chassis, is where it's binding up. Um, but if you've installed it properly, you shouldn't have that problem. Um, thread it all the way through. Make sure you're getting penetration um, through the throttle cable sheathing and the line. We can see that I have a little hang up here, so I'll have to pull my sheathing out. Thread it through, and then I'll bring it through my Uh, actual throttle cable attachment, like so. And now we have our throttle cable threaded all the way through our throttle cable sheathing. The next step, once you have the throttle cable threaded through the throttle cable sheathing, is to put it into your slide mechanism and insert that into your carburetor. Now, I do this before I go ahead and set my throttle position on the other end, simply to make sure that it's tethered and properly into my slide valve, and I make sure that I have a little bit of excess play on my throttle cable so that I'm not fighting there with very little throttle cable tension uh, against the return spring, which at times can be a bit of a process. So, the very first thing you'll want to do is, again, once you reach this step, is find your throttle uh, cable uh, cap, um, basically a rubber fitting that goes over it, thread that over the throttle cable itself, then over the sheathing and sometimes a little twist as you push this on, being careful to take your time not to tear the rubber boot um, is helpful, and push that all the way up on top of the throttle cable sheathing for now. Next, take your throttle cable cap, again make sure that you have uh, the rubber gasket on there, and we'll push that through the brass fitting, through the throttle cable cap, and we're going to push this all the way until the sheathing is fitting very tightly against the throttle cable cap. Then we take our rubber boot and we push that down. Again, you may have to do some twisting um, to fit that properly. Once in place, go ahead and take a zip tie and tie around the throttle cable boot and the throttle cable sheath. This will prevent the throttle cable sheath from backing out of the boot and just adds a little bit of extra security so that this mechanism stays together. Now, some people adjust their idle off of the brass fitting here. I'm going to strongly recommend not doing that if you can avoid it and instead using the idle adjuster as supplied by Briggs & Stratton on the actual carburetor. The reason I don't suggest this is because this can slide in and out as you're running, which will change your idle setting, and that's not always ideal. Okay, we've got our throttle cable into our throttle cable sheathing, we've got our boot and cap in place, and we're ready to move on to the next step. Um, and the very next step is going to be actually inserting the throttle cable into our slide valve, putting the needle in, and putting that whole mechanism together. So, grab your throttle cable return spring. Now this is internal to the Briggs 206 carb, and it's going to be very important that this goes on first. Thread this on your throttle cable. 
And then we're ready for our slide valve and needle next. Your needle will usually come disassembled, and so it's important to have the needle itself as well as the very, very small circlet, the retainer clip, actually in one of the slots on the needle valve. To install this, simply take this, find a flat surface, for example a side pod can work pretty well. Find the slot that you want to put it in, I'm going to recommend either slot 2 or 3 to start for most 206 racers, and push down. Once you have the retainer clip installed on your needle valve, then it's time to insert that into the throttle valve itself, and you'll want to start on the top area, so we slide that down, then find your retainer clip and push that into place. Now it's very important um, that this sits in a position where it will not interfere with the throttle cable, so that can take some jiggling of the throttle or the uh, throttle valve itself. So we move it around until it kind of sits roughly in the position that you want. And then some people use a ball end Allen or something similar. I like to use a little 8mm quarter inch drive socket. Push that in to the top of your needle valve and simply push down. And now your retainer clip is pushed all the way down into the bottom of the throttle valve so that we minimize any play that we have on our actual needle valve when we slide it into the carburetor so that it opens and closes properly and we get our proper fuel air mixture into the carburetor itself. Next, we'll need to put this actually on our throttle cable. So, pull your throttle cable up, take your throttle return spring and slide it over, being careful not to let it slide through the sides of the spring, the throttle cable. Bring that all the way down to your cap and then find your uh, throttle valve itself, and there is a recessed area where the end of the throttle cable sits. Pull that in and around, and then with your other hand, pull tension on your throttle cable and bring the throttle return spring into the throttle valve, and now you have successfully assembled this portion of your throttle cable assembly. Okay, we've got our needle valve assembled, and now we have it, the throttle cable threaded all the way through that and we're ready to put it all into the actual carburetor. Once we're ready for this step, it's very important to again have the whole assembly uh, installed the way that we have talked about so far and find on your needle valve the area that I call the ramp. And this is going to be 180 degrees opposed to where we put our throttle cable. The throttle cable is denoted by this groove all the way through the throttle valve, whereas the ramp is an angled area that only goes part way up the throttle valve. Very important that as you begin to put this whole assembly into the carburetor, that that is facing the idle air adjustment screw. Find that, and then push it in. And then while holding tension on your throttle cable, put the rest of the assembly in. It's also important to note on the throttle cable cap itself that there are some wings on these areas and those need to fit tightly in the back side of the throttle cable cap, not anywhere else, otherwise the throttle cable can hang up, it can stick, and not fit properly. Once you uh, have this all inserted, bring your throttle cable retention cap and screw in, set it down, and let it find its first couple threads, and then begin to gently turn it into place. And once you're sure that it won't cross thread, screw it all the way tight. And there we have it. Now our throttle cable assembly and throttle valve are assembled properly in the carburetor and now we're ready to set the other part which is towards the throttle pedal of the actual go-kart. First thing you want to do of course is thread the throttle cable and make sure that it's underneath your steering mechanism so it doesn't interfere with that as the cart turns. Then thread your throttle cable through the throttle cable clamp the first time and depending on your pedal assembly in the case of this Tony part here, this actually will go around the throttle pedal, but sometimes there are loops actually on the pedal. Um, I will loop it through my little homemade uh, throttle cable guard here, and I do this to prevent uh, any rubbing on the throttle cable directly from the throttle pedal. And uh, you can use a little surgical tubing, or fuel line, or really anything that you see fit. It's just important that there's something there, otherwise over time the opening and closing of the throttle pedal will progressively wear out the, um, the cable and cause it to fray um, and wear as we can see this one looks like from the customer 
was getting close. So I'm just going to trim that just slightly. Blow that out. And uh, we'll try this again to go all the way through. There we go. That was proper this time. All right. Now once I'm around my throttle pedal, I simply bring my cable clamp forward, insert my throttle cable through it, and this is the part that a lot of people will get wrong. This is the part where people will pull either too little or too much tension on their throttle cable, um, and this is the part that will take some adjusting um, for you once you go to get it right. So, first things first, kind of hold um, the throttle cable near the throttle pedal and just gently pull it a little bit tighter. Bring your throttle cable uh, clamp towards the end of the um, throttle cable closer to the throttle pedal and then gently close down on the clamps. And depending on the clamp style you have, this is either a two and a half millimeter or three are the most common uh, Allen handle sizes. Uh, and now I've got my throttle cable temporarily set. Um, there should be decent tension from the little retention hanger on the actual chassis to your throttle pedal, but there shouldn't be so much that you're essentially already opening the throttle with the uh, throttle pedal in its closed position. Um, a good way to check this is essentially just feel for any play, and if you see anything more than just a mild play side to side, you know that you've probably gone a little bit too far. As you go to what on your throttle pedal is showing full throttle, you should hear the throttle slide moving up and down just slightly in the actual carburetor and then feel for once you've gone to what is full throttle feel for any excess play in your throttle cable if you're feeling any excess play that likely means you need to move your throttle pedal adjuster give yourself a little bit more throttle uh, move uh, movement if not if you're finding that it's nice and tight meaning that the throttle slide in the carburetor isn't moving up any more up or down if you pull on the throttle cable itself likely you have a pretty good throttle position um, another great way to test this, of course, is, um, and maybe have a friend help you, is pull your throttle cable all the way tight with the throttle pedal and look down the actual port of the carburetor and make sure that the slide is moving all the way upward in the carburetor. Of course, with a slide-restricted carburetor where we are running a, glee, a green, a blue, or a gold slide, it will not go all the way up, but with a black slide like we have here, it should move all the way up out of the actual inlet inventory. At this point, it's a matter of essentially tightening things up and making sure that everything is ready to go. So I've got my throttle cable clamp, my throttle cable around my throttle pedal, and I'm ready to install my air cleaner now that I don't need to look at my throttle slide anymore. Um, zip tie this to your engine is a very common thing that Briggs 206 racers will do. Um, and then typically any excess throttle cable, sometimes people will either uh, duct tape or uh, tie with electrical tape to their Nerf bar or if there's a little hole in the actual Nerf bar sometimes you can thread the excess throttle cable up through there. Some people will also trim them although I recommend having a little excess in case you need to uh, adjust your throttle cable later. That's it for this installment and quick edit on how to install your throttle cable properly on a Briggs & Stratton 206 from pointcarding.com. Don't forget to head over to our website for everything you need for everything 206.